Alan mentioned, um, my late father, George Margulis, who died a couple of years ago, and my father-in-law, Harry Zaslow, who also died a couple of years ago, were both Army veterans, and we are very proud as a family of their service to our country. As a matter of fact, my father-in-law actually wrote a book about his experiences. He was a liberator at Dachau, uh, and the book is called A Teenager's Journey in War and Peace. It was an amazing experience. While he was in the war abroad he, for four years, he wrote letters home to his mother. And he didn't know, but she saved them in a box. And when she died, he found that box of letters, 400 of them, and turned them into a book. And it's an amazing book. And it's really a legacy for our family that we cherish. So to my amazement, I have come to learn that Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Jefferson, who is here tonight and was one of your Victory Award recipients last year, was also a liberator at Dachau. Uh, so I want to give shout out to him this evening. He was also uh, featured on uh, the special that we do at Fox 2 each year, Tribute to Our Troops. And it was our honor and priv privilege to feature him in that program, which will be on again this year on uh, Veterans Day, as it always is. We feature stories about Michigan service men and women and their families, and we profile them and the amazing commitment um, that they have made to our country. They initiated a fundraiser even by selling tickets for another B-17 bomber flight at the Yankee Air Museum, raising thousands of dollars for us. When our mission changed, from the honor flight trips to the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. They were right there by our side. They've been with us on so many of our events and fundraisers that we really need to outfit them with GPS trackers so we know where they are and what they're doing for us. They've been to pancake breakfasts, movie premieres, VE Day and VJ Day events, book release parties, our memorial site dedication ceremony, brick paver preview parties, D-Day movie nights, various fundraisers, and more. They even continue to attend the Flyboy lunches all these years later, twice a month. If any of you ever want to meet a group of World War II veterans and hear their stories, they meet at Little Daddy's at 18 and Woodward on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. I encourage you to go and hear their stories. So Bill and Murray have taught me that it's never too late in life to get involved. It's never too late to make new friends and to fill your world with more people to love and who will love you back. It's never too late to find a whole new group of people that you can admire and respect. It's never too late to take a younger woman out for a Guinness and to teach a young dog new tricks. And it's certainly never too late to tell your story to those who want to honor you and give you back in small measure for everything you have done for us. Bill and Murray are now 93 and 95 years old. They've been tireless supporters of our cause, and it is them that we honor tonight with the Victory Award. Their World War II service, their kindness, their spirit, and their smiles bring us joy every day. I suggest each of you take the opportunity to talk to them tonight. They are truly remarkable men that I and the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial are truly privileged to call our friends. Well, thank you very much. I'm honored to receive this award because I know there's a lot of other veterans out here that did just as much as me or probably more. And I, and I, I can't get over how eloquent Debbie was with her talk, with her speech for us. And I also want to thank her and her crew for the fantastic and enormous job they've taken on to, to do this memorial for us. I know it's just heartbreaking, frustrating, but they're plugging along. I really appreciate it. When I think back, in 1941, I was just a carefree 17-year-old junior in high school until Pearl Harbor. And then my life changed. 
all my dreams, aspirations, plans were either eliminated or just shelved. I only had two concerns. When am I going to the service and what branch? Eventually, I applied to the Army Air Corps. I was accepted as an aviation cadet. But I went through a lot of emotions when I was in the service. I was airsick, seasick, homesick, happy, bored, worried, scared, and terrified. But I was glad to do my part in winning the war. Because it was a bad war, a very costly war. 403,000 were, were lost, and many thousand more were wounded in mind and body. But we maintained our, our freedoms and, and our rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble, the right for a fair, a, a fair trial, and the right to protest. And if you didn't like an elected official, you could get rid of them by voting. So I want to say thanks to all the veterans whose lives, ladies, men and ladies, men and women, whose lives were interrupted so they could serve their country to defeat the enemy. In, in 2007, I went on the honor flight that Debbie mentioned, and as I was getting on the bus to go to the airport, they gave me a bag. It had a candy, gum, and a camera, and a t-shirt. And on the t-shirt, it said, on the front, Hunter Flight, Michigan. But on the back, it had these words. If you could read this, thank a teacher. If it's in English, thanks a veteran. No better words spoken. Thank you. Yes, I was in the war. There are a lot more of them that are in the war than, than I, but, uh, oh, I talk it like this, can you hear me better this way? <laughs> but um, uh, 20th Air Force is where I was in the Pacific, and uh, um, we had we had a marvelous time. Joy, buddy. I use the word crap you about what you uh, did or didn't do uh, during the war. Uh, I've got a few things to to show you that would prove it. We've got such a nice crowd here tonight. Good Lord, look at them. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm. You all right? You good? Set. You want to say more? Do you want me to quit? No. <laughs> no. I want you to hold the mic so they can hear you. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Hold the mic so they can hear you. <laughs> I might be here the rest of the evening. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. That's it. That's something that so many of the men that come up for a meeting such as we have here tonight and for a Food and whatever we had for the rest of it, but uh, uh, I came home whole. I went in whole and came out whole. More Thai is a little island down the South Pacific, and uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and 
B-24, B-24 was our plane. And uh, we had some bad things that happened. As any one of you that was in the plane during the war, uh, but we're here to talk about it. And I'm not a hunter yet. I'm getting close. <laughs> but anyway, it's so nice to see all of you here. I didn't realize they were going to be here like this. Of young men and women, we ask that you stand if you are able and turn your attention to the Cast Tech High School Junior ROTC Color Guard. And also, please remain standing immediately following the presenting of the colors as Christiana Marks and Jakira McCarty from the ROTC, I think I said that wrong, I think it's Jakira, from the ROTC will sing our national anthem. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to ask all of our veterans in the audience to please remain standing if you're able. The rest of you may be seated. and love for these great Americans. Thank you so much. And we are not quite through yet. Finally, with all of our World War II veterans 
and original Rosie the Riveters and Homefront Workers remain standing, please. And ladies and gentlemen, let's give one more round of applause for the heroes of our great generation. We can't thank you enough for your courage and your sacrifice. You are the reason that we are building the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. Thank you so much. So now I'd like to take a moment to read to you a very touching story, a story called The Fallen Soldier. Most of you may have seen by now the empty table up here, uh, right here by the stage. While we are blessed to have some of our World War II veterans with us tonight, the sad fact is that they did not all come home. So here is the story and the symbolism about this lone table. The table before you is set for one to symbolize the frailty of one soldier alone against their enemies. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single yellow rose, symbolizing remembrance, displayed in a vase, reminds us of the families and loved ones of our comrades in arms who keep their memories alive, lest we forget. The red ribbon tied so prominently on the vase is a reminder of the bloodshed to protect the liberty so loved by our country. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. There is salt upon the bread plate, symbolic of the family's tears. The glass inverted because we cannot toast, they cannot toast with us this night. The chair, the chair is empty, they are not here. Remember all of you who served with them and called them comrades, who depended upon their might and relied upon them to keep you safe, for surely they have not forsaken you. That's a really beautiful, I'm glad I got through that. <laughs> all right, so now, Excited to start the USA, USO portion of the evening. We, we, we're going to have Ron Kistrick and the Masters of Big Band playing our big band favorites, accompanied by Paul King on vocals. We also have a very special treat tonight, Harold Lanning, World War II veteran who was in the Special Services Entertainment Unit during the war and performed in USO shows, is going to take the stage one more time to sing a couple of his favorite songs that he performed 72 years ago. Amazing. We're going far across the sea. Let us wear a legion to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful.
by Rudyard Kipling. And uh, Oli Speaks put the music to it. And it's called On the Road to Mandalay. Dinner. 